Panzer tool clamps. There are lots of different kinds. We have four examples right here. We have an early type Panzer IV clamp. We have what I call a type 1 and a type 2, and then one of these just single piece of metal tow cable holders from a Panzer III. This video will be hyper-focusing on what I call type 1 and type 2, standard types of Panzer tool clamps. If you're all interested in restoring a vehicle or building better models, this video is targeted at just educating you on what I have discovered by studying these clamps for a number of years. So for the sake of simplicity, for the rest of this video, we will be referring to these as type 1 and type 2. So type 1 is this one on the right, and type 2 is this one on the left. And let's look at how they're differently put together. So type 1, which is here, consists of what we will be referring to as the band, which is this, the base, and the handle. We'll just simplify it with those terms because they, they both have the same things, but they're different. So on a type 1, the base, which we will highlight here, is a fork shape from the top. And in the back here, as it comes up, it kind of wraps around like a P shape. And they usually have a varying degree of shift from this section up until the final section where the, the little rod goes through. Now these also have a piece of leather riveted to them right here, which is different than type 2. Type 2 does not have that. They use these sort of silver rivets that's what I'm calling them. I don't know exactly what they are, but they come out the backside a little bit and they're sort of, uh, I can highlight it there, you can sort of see the shape. It's just a simple thing. So that is the base of this. Now the band on here, which is here, comes around this piece of the handle. Maybe we'll see a little more. So it wraps around this pin in the handle, comes down here. Now on a type 1, there's usually a pretty sharp angle. Now that's a little rounded off because that's what they really look like, but it's flat and then it bends down, which then at the bottom, the steel is wrapped back up around this bar. So, and we also have leather it riveted in two spots to the band so if you can see let's see if i can highlight these pins you know this piece wraps around the the back pin there this goes around that pin it's pretty simple i'm sure a lot of people already understand it but i'm just showing it as accurately as i can and then the handle is very, very simple. It just has some holes drilled in it. There's nothing too complicated about it. Now, one of the differences that we'll look at is on a Type 1, it's actually a smaller handle, and it's quite rounded. So that's the primary parts of a Type 1. So notice we have this rod going through the bent steel here and that this wraps kind of around this way around that pin and we have the leather and obviously the fork is a very um, identifying feature of the type 1. So type 2 obviously you can just look at it and tell that it's different. So in general on these we have sort of this W base shape um, not always but often and we'll look at the ones that don't but on the sort of mid-sized ones, it's often sort of W shape. Um, this is bent forward, and then this very much, like the other one, is sort of in a P shape. Now, one thing that's different about type 2s than type 1s is they cut this part that bends around here. Let me isolate this by itself so you can see it. This is cut here, and when this is bent back around this piece isn't and that's done that way so that when the handle here comes down it stops going straight out so it it rests on there that's what that's for sorry about the type one bleeding through the screen there so then the bands on these are quite a bit different 
as you can see, they have this sort of overly complex shape, whereas on this one over here, it just wraps around there. Like that's what the band looks like by itself. Here, they have this kind of crimp here that then goes over top of the first pin, then it sort of wraps around like a backwards S around the other pin. It's much more complicated, but it does the exact same thing. And then the handles are longer, thinner, and tapered this way, whereas this handle over here is flat that way. One of the only major other differences that I can tell uh, about their construction is that in this one I can't actually figure out how the pins stay together, and on here we have these little pins that go through the pin and hold it in place. And then obviously the front, this just lips around as opposed to fitting through the fork over there. So type 1, type 2, they're built very differently than each other. Um, neither is an early or a late, they're just different. Uh, but these are just the kind of most common sizes of both. I've never seen leather in here, and there's also a million variations of this Type 2 style that I'll show you. Okay, the first one we're going to look at is a currently functional Type 1 of what I would call the medium size, the middle size. So, um, as you would expect, you push on the handle on this side, which releases this, and it pops out and opens up. This one's a little bit crumpy, but it does work. So these are the parts functioning. Obviously, you know, pin goes through there. That's how this moves. Pin goes through the back of the handle. That's how this moves. You can see how much rust falls off of these things. So if we look, we can see we have, these are the two what's remaining of the rivets where the leather was. And then as well, we have a spot here. We should be able to see it on the back side. So that's where the leather went through. Um, it's not much of a change in height from here. So this is just a little jump up there. So this is sort of a middle size because it's mainly of just that. Um, just the lack of change in height. It's a little grumpy. Now. There we go. So if you look, it's kind of triangular shape. You got one, two, and sort of three, but there's that bend. And it would have been a lot tighter with the leather there. So you also have two holes, which is pretty standard in the bottom of all of them. They're usually either screwed or bolted or riveted or something. Sometimes welded to a like a riser. But that is, in my opinion, like a medium-sized tool. Like not an axe, but maybe like um, like the inertial starter handle I can fit in here. Not very comfortably though, so I'm not sure if with leather that would have fit. But that's the exact profile. That's what they look like from the top. So let's compare really quickly to this, which is the, what I would call sort of the larger size. So if you look at them together, really the only difference, if you compare them this way, is the amount of height that is here. So that juts up a lot more. There really isn't any larger size, like lengthwise, but then the band is completely differently shaped. So this is that band, and you can see that it's sort of round here, and then it rounds back off and kind of comes straight down. The only part that moves on this one is this thing. This is seized up, but if you look at the two together, they're pretty much the same size. But if, if you had leather in here uh, and a tool, that's what that one would look like if it was kind of taut and there was something fat kind of in there. So I don't know if most people know that because a lot of times when you see these, they're done in kind of like this ways, but not necessarily that there's just a slight difference here and then therefore the band needs to be different. Same holes. Um, you can see that the majority of the, the base shape is the same until you get to this point. Handles are the same. Nothing much to report there. On the top, they look about the same. Now here's another one of these. The exact same one I just showed you. Except this one has some of the leather intact. 
this one's completely seized. But as you can see, the leather is, you know, it doesn't fit very well. There's also a screw kind of stuck in here from whenever it was attached to a tank. But it is, again, identical with the other one as far as their dimensions. So there's, they're pretty standardized, obviously. But really the only difference between that one and this one is that that one's a little more free movement and here you have this little bit of leather for the bottom part. But this size with this part coming up seems to be a lot more common. Um, I've seen these on the Bobbington Panzer III where it's low with the bend in the band. But I have a piece of a Panzer III with a couple of these on it as well. So these seem to be a very common size. Here's another one of those um, that's also seized and kind of coming apart. Um, it's the only difference that I can point to is that it's a little bit like more extreme in its angle. Now I don't know if that's like a variance in the manufacturing or if it was damaged, but like that angle is different. Like this is a little more straight up, but that's really it. But it does kind of seem larger, but it's not really, it's just slightly bending back that way, which could definitely impact um, how these snapped in there, like how tightly. And then as far as that size, I have one more of those that's seized open. It is, again, um, dimensionally exactly the same as the rest of these. This one, this piece goes very much straight up. Uh, there you can again see where the rivets for the leather would be, and in the top. Can't see the back one on this one. But basically, for my tastes, uh, what I did was just buy as many of these as possible to compare measurements and then figure out what the like basic measurement would be, you know, you can kind of account for variances that way. But again, uh, that sort of rounded shape as opposed to this shape, you can see the difference in the shape of the band. Also, um, we have then this one, which is again this same size, but is seized open, but is incredibly clean so I do have hopes of getting it to work, and it has original paint on it as well. Uh, it's the first of this size that I got, so I was able to measure it pretty well. It's a really nice example, and I'm not positive that it's exactly the same as the others, because I can't quite um, compare them, but like, see the band is a lot larger. But the bases are not any different in size, so I think that this band might just be a little more bent, like it needs to be bent back down. I don't know, but it's a very nice example of, again, this type. So I think I have six or seven of these, and I've only seen two of the medium size and then three of the small. But this definitely seems to be the most common size. And it's what you see a lot on Tiger. There is a couple of these style on Tiger as well. But we'll go over uh, sizes and types uh, later. Now this piece is interesting, and unfortunately I only have the bottom of it. Um, but the leather is in very good shape. And if you compare it um, dimensionally to this one, as you can see, it is much longer. Unfortunately, it's a little bent. But I'm guessing that this would have been the size that could hold the wire cutters, like with a much longer band. My assumption is the band would be the same shape as this larger or taller style, um, because it suggests to me that it, it was, but I can't really tell with how jacked up this one is. And I've been unable to find another one, but as you can see, the holes are much different in size, and it's much wider or longer, whatever you want to call that. Um, but that's a very, very good reference for the leather. It's just a rectangular strip, and then they pinned it in there, and it's tough enough that it just holds that shape. I mean, at least it is now. All right, so the, the last size I was referring to. Not sure which one to show you first, so I'll show you this. Um, it's very seized and very beat up. It does have the leather intact in the bottom, but there's none on the top. The rivet is still there. 
but it's so seized that like it's it's stuck kind of in a goofy position where I can't see what it would have looked like closed. I don't have a properly just closed one. Uh, as you can see, the rivet's rusted out there. But this one's kind of... Um, I'm not sure how to explain. This is the small size, so there's like... There's this one, then um, you know the one with this band, and then that larger one, and then yet another larger one. So I would have went from this is the smaller one to this is the medium one. Again, if you measure them, they're not terribly different lengthwise, but this one's almost flat. Um, there should be a little bit more of a rise in it. It got kind of smushed, I'm guessing, but not drastically. But this band does not shoot out and bend down. It just wraps around the pin and then goes straight down. So it's pretty much um, just smaller based on the style and shape of the band. So everything else is the same. I mean, the fork dimensions, it's hard to, to discuss that thoroughly in a video like this, but you can see they're almost the same. But it's just, there's almost no rise in height there. But I have another one, this one, that's completely seized. It's like, it's become a solid lump, but it is that style of band. There's a little bit more difference in the height there, like a little jog up. You can see it's different. So this is probably what it was supposed to be shaped more like. Um, it's unfortunately not very even measurable because it's in such a state. But I do have a very nice one, which is this one, which has almost no kind of cruddy rust, but it is seized up. Um, but I was able to get perfect dimensions off of this and make a 3D one. So, um, as you can see, the, the height difference is there. It, it matches more with this one. Uh, it's actually a little bit larger than that one. There are variances in these. But the band, you can't really tell because it's seized to the handle, but it is just sort of that... It's this same shape. And then this leather is really interesting. Um, it has, like, a little bit of what looks like red primer on it. And it's in an incredibly good shape. I thought it was, like, faux leather when I first saw it. It looks like vinyl, almost. Uh, this was the first type one I ever got, and it was at least something to go by, so I could start measuring and creating 3D stuff and testing them. But again, the holes are pretty similar. They're tighter together on this size. And then there's a bit of difference there, but mostly, again, it's just that it's a little bit lower of a jack up in height, and then this one's a little bit shorter. I have plans to maybe try to unseize this one because it has no paint. I could just take some heat to it and try to get her moving. Okay, so a couple of just random pieces. This one that I showed before that has the nice leather and is longer, this could be the band for it. I'm not sure the, the, the size of band, but it actually looks even bigger if you look at it. So this was probably the wire cutter sized one, but this is all that I have. I just have a giant band that's seized to the handle. But, in theory, I can extrapolate some dimensions from this and create a 3D file and figure it out. I need to get to museums or have people measure them for me. Um, people always wonder why I always ask for um, clamp pictures or measurements when they go to Bobbington or Munster, but that's what I need. I can't figure out what I need to do without uh, more measurements. And then this one's really interesting as well. This is probably this size again, although it looks really, really small. So it could be an even smaller size, but as you can see, it's gotten really jacked up and squished forward. Um, but it's just in nice shape and it's got original paint on it. But my assumption is it's basically this size, but just squished. Yeah, I think that's about right. So again, uh, the major uh, way that they work you know, this bar slips under here. That's the big difference between one and two. And then that band wraps around this way, as I showed in the 3D stuff. Um, I really prefer this kind. I know it might sound silly. I just, I'm kind of more interested in this type because I think it's strange. This is um, one that I created before I had a lot of these. So what it actually is, is based on the measurements of this one. It's basically this guy. 
but a little bit more rigid. Like these are kind of, the bends have a lot more subtlety in them. And I just kind of went straight with like what I had measured with my calipers. So this is kind of what that style would look like when it's closed. Obviously not a whole lot different, but this is a 3D printed one. The handle's not quite right, it's too square. I mean, if you look at the real ones, they're a lot more rounded. I've since fixed that, but this was just my first test to see uh, how they would work in plastic prototyping, basically. Okay, so type two, here's our type two. Should look a lot like the one that was in 3D. Um, again, obviously to operate, you push forward, which pushes that off, and you just open it up, and then you put your tool in, and then close it up like that. Um, so, as we talked about with 3D files, if we compare the handles, you see the difference. There's that W shape compared to the sort of L shape. Um, and then the kind of cotter pin situation in these pins, whereas these are just flush. But there's that, that cut in the steel when they bend it, so you can see when when you're pulling it back, it stops there. I've got some where that's more pronounced and some where it's less pronounced, but it usually stops right about here. So this particular Type 2, um, I have painted up in just a modern day red primer because it came to me painted black from Russia, which means that whoever found it in the ground noticed it was rusty and just spray painted it a color to sell it. It does have a lot of give in it, if that's of any interest to people. I found it interesting sort of how they they differ in that way um, opens and closes really easily but will stay closed four holes instead of two like the other ones quite pitted this example but you know here you can see the the kind of backwards s coming around here this is one that i just kind of play with as a stress reliever i like this clamp because it's very functional so then we have this guy which is essentially the same one, but then you're starting to get into sort of relative size variation. You can see that this one's much shorter, and that really is all just from the angle of this band. It looks like it's bent a little silly, like it should be pushed forward, and this should come down here and then pop back up, so I think it just got bent, but it does sit a lot higher. Operates just as well. Uh, the keen eye of you will notice this is in very, very good condition, Panzer gray paint. So I like this one quite a bit. It's one of my favorite examples. Um, everything's identical to the other one. Four holes, W shape. Um, there's that thing. Those do get shiny because they get smacked on a lot. Um, and then you've got your little cotter pin things holding those in. But it is a very good condition example. I was really glad to find it. The first Type 2 I ever saw was this on um, like a retail relics website. As you can see, it's really pitted. I'd love to know if anybody knows what this bracket is for. It seems like it went on a slanted vehicle because it it's on an angle. I've never quite seen that bracket before. So it's riveted or bolted or something to the bracket. It does work quite well. It also has a lot of surviving gray, but with a ton of pitting and rust. It's a little tougher, but it does more resemble the angle of the red one. So I'm starting, you know, quickly seeing that that's probably how they're supposed to look, so to speak. Uh, same pins holding in the main pins. A little bit tougher to operate, um, but that's what it would look like attached to a vehicle. Uh, and again, if anybody sees that mounting, please tell me, because I'd love to know. I have no idea. I'm guessing my thought when I originally saw it was like armored car or something. I don't know, it's just a guess, but it's a nice example, just a bit pitted, but it still functions very well. Um, the dimensions, I've measured all of these. The handles are as near as identical as they can possibly be. You know, a lot of times the same pins are used, not always, but a lot. Uh, sometimes these fit really tight, sometimes they fit loose, like this one's kind of loose. This is an interesting example of a Type 2 that got really smushed. The screws that held it to whatever vehicle it was on are still in place. As always, they're flathead because nobody used Phillips there and then. Um, there's a lot of primer showing on the bottom for people interested in paint. Also gray chipping crazy there. 
Uh, but essentially it's the same as the others, it's just smushed and very, very seized. So when you compare the parts, they match exactly, but it just looks like it got squished. You know, lots of weight here, and it's pretty seized. It might be able to be resurrected if I wanted to, but I kind of just like leaving it as an example. Um, that's very pronounced there, that cut in the metal when they bend it. Um, I was really surprised how large these screws were. I don't know what I expected them to attach to the hull with. Now, one interesting variation here is that you can see this one has sort of a different style pin going through there. These just have kind of standard pins, but this has like a nipple kind of thing going on with that pin. Not sure what that's about, just sort of noting differences. This example of a Type 2 is again the same size. Um, everything's near as makes no difference, identical to this main one. Uh, this one's again just seized. We've got some kind of original paint there, can't tell what it was because it's very deteriorated. Um, but again, the dimensions all match, everything's almost identical. Before we go on to a different uh, size. This one is like what I would consider a one-off. Um, I've never seen anything quite the same size as this. Um, I saw something somewhat similar on one of Bruce Crompton's vehicles, uh, but I don't know if his boys made that, like his crew. But So this one was cut off of a vehicle in Russia quite um, unceremoniously. You've got some peeled back steel here, probably a soft skin looking at how thin that steel is. But you can see here that um, there was sort of brackets underneath the vehicle steel that were with the bolting it on there, or riveting, whatever they did. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't care for how this was harvested, probably by a, what they call the black diggers. Um, so don't judge me, I'm trying to save these things, I just buy them off eBay, so um, I'm not encouraging people to dig up wrecks and stuff. But So another interesting thing about this one is that how much pressure it's under, so it just snaps really hard right off there. Um, but it's just a U shape instead of a W shape. It seems like the band in the handle are exactly the same. You just don't have that bend and it's a little bit taller. So I'm guessing if they needed to they could just alter how they bent it or what they bent and just make a slightly longer piece because it's just a strip of steel. So that's an interesting sort of variant of the standard type two, just a little deeper. Another one I've never seen a second of is this one, which is a very deep piece there. As you can see, it's much taller than the one I just showed you. And it was on, it was welded to this uh, piece here, where the holes for the screws were, but then there's a piece welded in here to essentially make it really short. Um, it also still works. Um, I've never seen it anything like it. It was just, it popped up and I was like, that's interesting. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, one type of vehicle needed a special clamp, so like people at that factory were just like, well, this will make it fit. Don't know, never seen a photograph or anything. So, and the band is a little bit more simple. It doesn't have that kind of tuck and then bubble. It just sort of goes bleh, like it was slapped together. So it could be damaged or it could have been made that way. I don't actually know. So this one, I've seen photographs of, if I'm not mistaken, it was on a 251. Uh, I did research more when I got it, but it's essentially a very common type, but a very large one. This one, unfortunately, is quite seized together. It's got a lot of nice gray paint on it, but it's just a larger version of what I call the shovel clamp. This is the shovel clamp I'm speaking of, and this is incredibly iconic because it was on the front fender of a Kubelwagen. So anytime you go to a reenactment anywhere, you're probably going to see one of these because they're actually, for whatever reason, you know, still around quite a bit. Um, this was the first one I actually received. I bought um, this one off a site, but before I could get it, um, I found this one on eBay and bought it. I was quite stoked that it actually functioned, but this one's also as well under a ton of pressure. It's difficult to get it up, but so. You can see the same kind of shape in that band. Bubbles over there and kind of an angle down there. It does seem to be important to the functioning of the clamps. because you can see they all kind of have that. And that does sort of create the correct tension. But this one is just, again, like a larger version. But I've, it seems to be quite a bit rarer. And, but, you know, using the same technique of bending the metal in the same way. So 
it's an interesting piece. I have a bunch of these. I only have one like this. Now, we'll get onto a little side tangent about this one because some of the examples I have of this one are strange. So every band I've shown you thus far has been shaped like this, sort of this thin bent metal. This is a squished and I can't remember if this one works to be honest with you. I guess not. <laughs> I have one that sort of works, but it's not this one. Um, it's the same one. You can see it just got squished and it still has its screws intact. But the band is tubular, so to speak, and then until the pins go in, so it's round-ish. It's actually flat on the back and round here and then flattens out, which is different than ev just about every other one I have, except I have another damaged one of the exact same kind, which is completely tubular and not flat on the inside. So it's like another variation of that. So I went digging around in my pictures when I first got these, because I was like, well, that's weird. Um, the only vehicle I can ever find that has these tube-style handles is Panther. And we'll look at those pictures at the end of the video. Um, but the Aberdeen vehicles that are in pretty good original shape have clamps with these style handles. So if people are restoring Panthers, I'm sure there were versions that didn't. But a lot of the ones I've seen have these different style handles than this. So it is just a weird variant. And the only hand, uh, clamps I have of them on are these two shovel clamps. Then we have this one, which as you can see is a lot longer than this one, which I keep on my wire cutters. This one is again Panzer Gray and still functioning. Pretty rough to function, like it's not smooth at all, but here you can see that same shape in the band, this loop and kind of a divot or kind of a dimple here and then it goes up and around and grabs that. It's very pronounced on here as opposed to here that kind of rise over the handle. So it's an interesting one. It does fit my wire cutters perfectly. Um, and on this they have three holes. I recently gave one of these away to a friend in Illinois who has a Jagdpanzer 38 and he had this style clamp that had been damaged before he restored the vehicle. The only difference in the one I gave him was it had these three holes and his was just a flat piece that was welded. But he did, since I've seen the vehicle last, um, take off the old one and replace it with this. The only thing I don't know is if this clamp was part of the G13 or the original Jagdpanzer outfitting. So I don't know. Hopefully he didn't replace something that was G13 because that would be kind of crap. But um, yeah, it's essentially the exact same design. Flat on the bottom, not the W shape, and then just much larger. And you put them next to each other. Obviously. I've got a couple more examples of this one. Dimensionally, they are the same. This one is just seized. I also had the one I gave away uh, for the Hetzer. I also have this one, which is again the same, but very, very seized. Uh, I tried to use some Evaporust on this one when I first started collecting, because anything that's super damaged, I was like, well, it couldn't hurt. And it started eating the clamp. That's what that is. So don't put your tool clamps in Evaporust because it is a good tool for thick things, but anything with thin steel, it'll just eat. But so that's the Type 2 wire cutter clamp. Again, um, here's my Type 1 band that I have, which matches about the same size. So again, it could be a Type 1 wire cutter clamp. I don't know. So now we get off into some weirder ones. I'll just show them to you quickly. Um, this is similarly sized to the shuffle clamps, but kind of built more like a standard Type 2. This one's been quite crushed. It does function. Um, I've seen ones like this on Schwimmwagens holding the, um, the oars. I don't know if they were used on lots of stuff, probably, but that's definitely one place I saw this style and this size. I'm always looking for reference, so if you see anything, this Wii um, and as you can see, the handles are still the exact same size. It's just a very, very small, flat little clamp. This one is a very strange one. I have no idea what it comes from, and it's bent, unfortunately, because it does function, but it can't close. Same style top, um, just a very thick U-shape. Compared to that one I just showed you, it's quite a bit taller. No idea where it comes from. It's just a clamp of the same type. Came from Russia, same people that I normally get stuff from, so, you know, more than likely wartime. 
could just be off with some truck or something, I have no idea. Four holes in the bottom, everything else, you know, same dimensions on the handles. I've also got this one, which is just another one that fits the dimensions of that first one I had just shown you. Slightly less damaged, um, but flattened to the point where it no longer functions correctly. And then it has this strange bracket that it's welded to. But just again, I like to get as many of these as I can to compare dimensions and stuff. So we also have what I think the closest thing it could be used for is a jack clamp. There's one very similar to this on Jagdpanzer 38, but I think it's slightly larger. I haven't measured the ones on, on my friend's vehicle, but his is damaged. This one is very, very fragile, has a couple layers of original paint. There's gray and yellow, and every time I touch it, paint flakes off, so I don't like to touch it. Um, but it's just the same kind of band, but it goes up at an angle and over and lips over there. Same handle, and then just a big deep U shape. It's interesting. And then the last variant of the Type 2s I'll show you is these monsters. And if you can find any reference of where these come from, please tell me. Um, I thought I saw something similar on the sides of the early 251s, like up on the, the side plates. But I can't tell, because the images are usually too small. But these are just beefy. Uh, if you look at like a standard Type 2, these things are massive. And I have no idea what they come from. This is obviously a German war vehicle, because you can see it's got original paint and it's very obviously German paint. Um, functions the same, this one's a little angry. Um, but it just has this kind of strange down angle and then kind of up there. And then usually there's these brackets welded in to keep them in shape. But they're about maybe a little bit longer than the standard size, but they're just, you know, huge. So um, I have a number of these. So this one is a pretty good example, but again, I have no idea where it was used. Now, here's another one, same dimensions. Still functions pretty well. Got some primer and some gray on there. Again, this is another example of one that was unceremoniously sheared off of a wreck somewhere in Russia. That's no good. Here's another one. Basically a twin to that one I just showed you. The bands are a little flatter, probably because they're so long. Um, but, you know, big. Can't think of anything precisely that would fit in there. You know, barrel cleaning rods or something much larger than an axe handle. But again, the handles are the same size. They just are larger than these. And then my last one is this one. He's a little bit larger, but that could just be from bends in the metal. He's actually cracking here, so I don't like to operate him, but he does still function. Um, just quite a large deep clamp, but the same standard idea of Type 2. They're still bending this here so that it rests correctly. So during editing, I noticed there's one thing I didn't explain, and I kept seeing it in the footage. So here I have two examples of the um, clamp for the wire cutters of Type 2 and they have really different pins, and I just wanted to point out this is an issue, or a, a, a known thing with Type 2s. So here you just see these standard pins with cotter pins. These, on this example, are more like track pins, where you have the one end that you, you know, kind of push in, and then the other end has the pins in them. Whereas this one, the little tinier pins are on both sides. It's not a huge difference, but I just felt it was worth mentioning. If I'm gonna go, go all in, right? So. Uh, that's another variation that I see all the time. Okay, so now we're just going to have a look at my tool clamp reference folder, just because there's some stuff I wanted to show that I don't personally own. So this is just a Panzer III in a Russian museum. I'm checking out the rear clamps and stuff. Uh, I don't own one of these yet, but I like them, and they're interesting to me. So I hold their tow cables on. But this image is actually the most important one. So this is a Martyr III in the French museum. And if you look over here, you see what is a combination of things that I've already shown you. This is the handle from a Type 1 and sort of a U-shaped variant of a Type 2 with that kind of typical band of a Type 2. And this is just what I see on all the martyr images I see of the, the Aberdeen one that we have in uh, be, uh, Benning now, but it's still in original conditions, in, in bad original condition, but all the parts are still there that are there. None of them have been added on. Same style of clamps, these Type 1 handles, the sort of rounder shapes here, like kind of a, a 
the more gradual bend, sort of um, just a variant of type 2 with a type 1 handle, and that's certainly not something I've ever heard anyone else talk about, uh, but it's something that I noticed while researching clamps because that's all I've been looking at. So, so here's a closer image of them. Again, type 1 style handle, um, doesn't taper, smaller, rounded, all along the fenders of the Martyr III. Uh, not all of these images will have perfect clamps, but here again, this is strange martyr clamps. Here again, that's clearly the Martyr III, same museum, other side of the fenders, same clamps. I've never actually seen one come up for sale, but they're interesting. And then up here, you appear to have kind of the, the taller style, like my kind of jack clamp, but with those same type 1 handles here as well. These are the jack clamps. I did not cover these. I built them in 3D for my Tiger project. They're interesting, but of a very different sort. So here, if we look at Bovington's vehicle, we can see here's the sort of mid-size type 1, mid-size type 1, the long flat type 1 that I don't have. But most of these appear to be type 1, uh, mid, kind of that bent size or style. This appears to be a smaller one. It's broken, but that's kind of what it looks like from here. Um, it's not correct wire cutters, but in the original clamp, See, this one's hard to tell because it's super bent, but that could just be from the tool that it's on, which of those two styles that it was. It doesn't look like the one where it's kind of flat and has a bend over it. It sort of looks like it was bent to the tool, so I can't really tell which size of type one that is. Same with this one here and this one here. These just seem really out of shape. Like, here's the smallest size that I showed you, but these ones are difficult to tell which one exactly they are. But here's that mid-size one. Uh, these are a different type of clamp that I also do tons of research on. Here is what appears to be the mid-size one, or the smaller size type 1 on King Tiger. Now this is a restored Panther, and as you can see it has type 2s. Panthers have all type 2 clamps. But this handle is the flat original type. This one looks to be the round one that I showed you with the flat inside. So this one's probably original, and I'm not sure if this one is. Um, and then this is interesting. I've never quite seen this before, um, even though it's in my own reference picture folder. Uh, this is a mid-size type 1, which I've never seen on Panther, so I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there. Um, it could be a restoration thing. Again, here's a standard, kind of deeper than the ones I showed you, Type 2. I've seen these for sale, but I don't have one, so they're just like the W one I showed you, but very a little bit taller, I guess I would say. Um, Walk-arounds are very good clamp reference, but you can't trust everything you see because a lot of them are on restored vehicles. Again, standard Type 2, same one I kept showing you. Um, I don't think my wire cutters would fit in mine. I'll have to check. Um, again, here's type 2s, here's a mid-size type 1 on the King Tiger at Bobbington. So this is the Panzer IV D at Bobbington, and here you can see we've got a couple different sizes of type 1, probably the smaller size. Um, I don't normally think of this clamp when I think of Panzer IV D, but there they are and they look original. Uh, this is on somebody's half track, so I, you know, there's leather straps holding stuff down. It doesn't look legit to me. It could be, but here's a some kind of Type 2, the shovel size, like the one I have. So again, here's the Panzer IV. You've got a Type 1 kind of squished over here. You've got this style. I own one of these, um, but I didn't talk about them today because it's not really what we're here to talk about. Pretty standard Type 2. This is Bobbington's. If we look here, you can see the rounded style Type 2 handle, so that does work. Same here. That different type of handle does only seem to appear on Panther. Now this is a Stug 3 or a Panzer 3. Now this is one that I really wanted to get into with everybody. That's uh, Tiger 712, but uh, I'll get into that Stug thing in a second. But here's another example of a variant that I don't even own, just a slightly different one. I catalog all of this stuff. I just have never-ending pictures of clamps because it became an obsession and I can't help myself anymore. 
And some of the stuff I build in 3D and I need as much reference as possible. Here's a smaller type 1 on the Bovington Yag Tiger. Um, here's a G13 with a bunch of different type 2s, including those jack clamps. I actually reference when I show my larger clamp. They are different, these. Um, but yeah, all these different size type 2s. I don't know if that's from the G13 part or from the Jagdpanzer 38 part. I don't know. Here is Benning's uh, Martyr 3 with those special style clamps I told you about. Again, type 2s with type 1 handles. Just very strange. Um, here is the exact... Uh, clamp that I gave my friend Mark who has his Jagdpanzer 38. That's where it went. His was broken off, so this does appear to be a wartime uh, Jagdpanzer 38, so luckily I don't think that was wrong. But you can see here that it's flat here with no holes, so unfortunately the one I gave Mark had holes in it, but what are you going to do? Um, Jagdpanzer, and I think we have our thicker handles on there as well. Yeah, we do. See, rounded on the outside, flat on the inside, which one of mine is. Again, panther or yag panther rounded handles. Never seen them anywhere else. That's a restoration, so I don't put much stock in the clamp. The, the restoration's great, but the clamp might be wrong. You know, I didn't know that at the time. So now I only look for original pieces like this. But again, here's panther. Here's those handles. So it's not just one or two. I've seen, like, this is one of our ones at Benning. And it has these rounded handle type twos. You know, I figured that out at some point, and I was like, holy crap, they all have it. Um, I'm not sure what vehicle this is, but this looks like a panther setup, and they're not that way. So this could be, well, no, this one is, but this one isn't. Uh, Panzer one. you know, these, these are a little more round than mine. They're exactly like my type ones, but just a little rounder in general. Was that just because of where they are made or a variation? I don't know. Fort Benning Stug, or one at, um, used to be at the Patton Museum. And I labeled these for a guy in Thailand that's building a Stug because I wanted him to know what he had to make because he didn't want to buy originals, he wanted to remake them. So this is a specialized Type 1 C hook clamp that I've labeled for him. And then here's some images. This is a Finnish Stug, but with original German clamps, Type 1s, on this fender. But this is the SUG I'm primarily using as reference just to show a point. Okay, so we've got the tow cable clamps there. Here's the big thing. you got type 2 here and type 1 here. And this is where the inertial starter crank goes, I think, because you got this little tube here. So it goes here, and then the axe goes here. And it's a mixture of types, which I'd never seen before. So that was an important discovery and important to point out to people that were restoring Stugs because I did some research and found that this is the case with just about everyone I've ever seen. I haven't seen one that contradicts it yet. Other than a restored one in Poland, and I got into an argument with the guy who restored it because he was snarky with me. I was a bit disrespectful, but I didn't know he was the guy that restored it at the time, and I was like, oh, it's unfortunate those clamps aren't right. And he's like, Whoa. so whatever. Um, but this is what it should look like, depending on which factory and whatever. But the type 2 for the axe, type 1 for the starter crank. These are the early type tow cable clamps. Um, so here's another type 1 back on the engine deck here. So that's here, whereas the crank goes here. Um, let's see. So there's type 2, type 1, another type 1 back here. It's just an interesting discovery, and I, I haven't gotten as good of images of the other stug at Benning, the one that's in really good condition. But it, it, if I remember correctly, it verified my stuff. So, also type two shovel clamp on the other side of the stug. So a mixture of type one and type two, which I'm not sure why. It just that's what it has. So lastly, we'll look here at this uh, restored Tiger, and. It has type 2s. This is the Munster Franken Tiger. As you can see, it has type 2s for the axe and type 2 for the wire cutters. Um, and all of this is wrong. These should all be type 1. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Um, this one looks like it might be original here, but I can't really tell. But, you know, that's one of the things that was an un unintended. 
um, side effect of studying these clamps for my own personal reasons is you start to know what should and shouldn't be. So uh, if anybody out there is restoring a vehicle and wants to ask for a little bit of research or dimensional information, uh, reach out to me. I'm already helping the Panzer I project in Spain. Those guys are doing amazing work and they just didn't know what to do. So I measured my stuff for them, sent them tons of reference images, have been discussing it with them as they go. They've been prototyping. I'm more than happy to help. Uh, scale modelers, you know, can use this information just so that they know what they're trying to create. But that's why I started doing the research, but it ended up being more just towards research and, you know, hence collecting real ones and starting to help people uh, recreate them for their restorations and making 3D printed ones. It just became an obsession and that's how things go. Um, so if you need anything, hit me up. I try to be as friendly as I can be. Uh, thanks for watching.